I mean, I don't know, 10, 15 years from now, probably understand who I am as a filmmaker in a very different way. But uh, this was a great first uh, sort of a venture into that space. To me, it's just, uh, I keep calling it school because that's exactly what it is in school. I love Parallel. I feel like this is such a great, intimate sci-fi story that keeps you on the edge of your toes all the way through. I almost forgot there's only three of you people, three of you guys in the film, which is incredible. Um, You, your brother, um, Edwin, and uh, Danielle Deadwilder, who plays Vanessa, a grieving Mm -hmm. mother. Uh, Tell me a little bit more about the story and how all this came about. So it all came about really uh, when our friend uh, Jalen Moore, who's also producing the project, his team Rumble Riot, they brought this to my brother and I uh, to star in. And the more we got into the process of, you know, picking it apart, we wanted to take a bit more of a senior position to help develop it out. So that's where the producing and the co-writing came. But, you know, the story's based off of Parallel Forest, the original film, which is a Chinese film. Uh, it's amazing. It's about this woman who suffers a great loss and as a result of it her marriage is crumbling she's losing a a bit of herself and you know she goes into without giving it away she goes through a series of events um that challenges her to think that the things she lost she may be able to get back um so she keeps going through these events no matter how confusing or dangerous they are just to figure out if she can you know become whole again really and uh her journey tests her sense of reality her beliefs her thoughts her theories on home and value and all that kind of stuff everything is reshaped for her along this this pathway so um you know my my brother and i we uh i don't want i mean we out today you know saying i don't want to kill it but we serve as pivotal mirrors or uh, for different parts of her journey you know um we reflect some of her anguish some of her joy some of her confusion and the things that she needs to fight for the challenges we we present and represent the challenges uh for her along the way and uh you know she's she's doing her best and we'll see how it goes for her at the end of the film i love the fact that like this movie uh how do i i want to say this without spoilers uh this movie talks or a lot of the themes are some of some things that I've discussed amongst my friends about parallel dimensions, mirror theory, all these type of things. I got to ask, do you believe in that stuff? I can't say if I do or do not. I definitely believe there is a capacity for that to exist, you know, in terms of, I mean, we are, our universe alone is just a speck, <laughs> you know what I mean? So when it comes to what else could be out there, First, yes, there's there's absolutely other life out there that we are not aware of, but other versions of ourselves. I think it is, you know, quite a possibility. It would be cool. I don't know if I want to meet myself. I'll probably get on my nerves, but you know, uh, yeah, I, I think there's there, it could be could be uh, true for sure. I agree. I also think that it's something to it. Now, can you share some insight into your creative process when you were writing the screenplay for Parallel? Yeah, my brother and I, we. Um, there were a couple of different iterations of the script that hit us before we decided to jump on and, and uh, write as well. And the thing that we wanted to make sure of was that we didn't move away from the original intention of the, uh, of the original film, Parallel Forest. Um, we wanted to keep the elements in there that moved us and that inspired us to even approach this project. So um, just going over draft of the draft, making sure we try to figure out how to punctuate Vanessa's struggles and then, you know, make the highs the highs, the lows the lows. Working with my brother is very easy. I mean, we've been working together our whole careers, really, but never in this particular capacity. But, you know, this presented a great opportunity for us to take that next step. We've been looking forward to taking for quite some time. So um, we we also had a third anchor when it came to the the development of the story, things like that. John Kesey. Um but yeah, when it came down to to really scrubbing out, it was actually a pretty fun process trying to figure out what to put in, what to take away. And then you kind of see yourself and you're like, dang, I, I over talk a lot as I'm doing now, you know, um, and you have to really censor and edit yourself. It's a, it's a weird process, but it's good to have my brother there because we know each other so well that we know where to, you know, chop some things down. 
this is uh, the first time you and your brother have worked together in this this capacity, like you said, which is actually yeah. really exciting uh, for you guys to be jumping into this. Um, mm-hmm. This is also your own project. Can you talk about what you learned from this experience working with your brother and producing your own project? Man, uh, every mistake in the book was probably made. Every uh, you couldn't see it on screen. If so, you couldn't see it on screen. I'll tell you right now. No, I, actually, I don't say that in a, in a negative way. I say that speaking to any generation that's coming up, you know, jumping into making their own film. Take the bumps and the bruises. Is uh, they're just lessons because as mistakes were made, solutions were also found. It teaches you how to think differently, and it teaches you how to deal with, dictate, uh, lead, and lean on your team. So, you know, we're making. Uh, very small budget indie film with very little time. I think we shot this out in 20 days. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, we were working behind the ball on some things, man. And it's kind of like run and gun. And it's fun because it does push you to think about approaching filmmaking differently, especially from standpoint of what you don't have versus what you do have. And it sharpens your skills and makes you a bit more specific with your intention on certain things and um i've learned so much from this that i know exactly how i'm going to approach the next next project which makes me really excited because i know what i like what i do not like and then project that the project that's even just going to get become more it's going to become more refined and i will i mean i don't know 10 15 years from now probably understand who i am as a filmmaker in a very different way but uh this was a great first uh, sort of a venture into that space. To me, it's just, uh, I keep calling it school because that's exactly what it is in school. Let's talk about your character, Alex, for a second. How did you mm-hmm. approach your character's development and what aspects of your own personality did you bring to the role? I kind of split aspects of my personality, I think, um, playing various versions of him. Uh, the most closely associated version is original version where he's just a bit more compassionate. But I assigned different spectrums of of the I mean, I assigned different um categories uh from the emotional spectrum to different versions of you know alex as we saw him sort of evolve or devolve rather and the thing it was hard to some days were hard to figure out like which alex i'm playing and you know uh, you try to ride the thin line of, of making them all familiar the stream of familiarity but also as different as possible so that you know if two, three of them in the room at the same time, you know exactly which one is which. Sure. So that's the kind of thing that uh, was a great and fun acting challenge. And I, I know I was nervous. I was like, oh, did I get it right? I don't know, but we're going to see. <laughs> you know, we going to see. But no, I think that, uh, I think it turned out all right. It was fantastic. It, it, like, it kept me engaged the whole time through. And, it's, and when the story started playing out, I was, I, I felt like I was on that journey with Danielle's character, uh, was, just figuring out how how things were working out. And it, it excited me because it's stuff that I talk about all the time. Now, <laughs> when I spoke to your brother, Edwin, uh, yeah. we were talking about uh, your guys' production company and, and, and different IP that you guys are developing, stuff like mm-hmm. graphic novels and things like that. What are stuff? What are some of the things that you want to focus on uh, when developing your own IP? Definitely have a few biopics in the can. Um, graphic novel development, yes. Uh, we have uh, animated film, anime uh, projects. Um, have some animated shows that we're we're pushing right now. We're kind of genre wise in every bucket because we go for the genres that we like and the things that we want to see in those genres. Um, it really comes down to execution and making sure that uh, they fit the bill when it comes to how we want to represent our vision of art and craft, you know, is it superlative in any way? Is it um, approaching the subject matter and sort of a, sort of a, a, a nuanced environment that the audience hasn't been put in before. These are kind of things that we're looking for. We're looking for those challenges, but as far as genre, we are literally all over the map because I watch and consume any and all things. Switch gears for a second. Is there any chance you'll be making an appearance in Leverage Redemption Season 3? <laughs> uh, 
I mean, yeah, I guess the cats have a bag on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, there we go. Man, Leverage, man, that's near and dear to my heart, man. I, I started that show 2006, 2007, something like that. So, um, love the love the crew, love the audience. Um, for me, it really is just fun, and and honestly, I'm really grateful to be able to come back to something like that. Uh, and just be able to come and play and just it's easy breezy you know what i mean so uh, i got a lot of love for leverage in fact i just uh finished some work i came back maybe like a, a week ago finishing some work there so the last question i have for you is that you've worked with so many talented producers one that, that stands out to me is iram garcia um what did you take from working with all these amazing producers that you want to infuse into your own projects well i mean iram's great um so you're just learning how they uh, how they delegate. Um, it really comes down to the team understanding what the goal is and everybody knowing their job so well that you don't have to constantly steer people. You know, Hiram and the whole team at, at Seven Bucks, at least from my perspective, they are a well-oiled machine. Obviously, we see the results of it, but... Um, you know, they have, I feel like, great leadership, uh, great camaraderie. They're awesome people, too. You know, I mean, so it doesn't hurt to be a good person, a nice person. But execution is, well, an idea is nothing without execution. Execution falls without vision. Uh, and and vision becomes blurred without understanding your intention. So. Understand what you want to put out there, what you're trying to contribute, and then you go figure out how to do it and who to do it with. And uh, you're going to make some some mistakes along the way, but just be conscious and aware of those because those are happy, happy blessings that teach you how to get it right and get it better on the next one. I'm happy that you're succeeding. Uh, uh, I If you keep putting out projects like Parallel that are thought-provoking <laughs> and amazing and get people talking, I think that's the way to go, and I think you're killing it, man. Thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed Thank the film. I really appreciate that. That means a lot to me, man. Thank you. Thanks, brother. I appreciate you. Take care, man.